Hey guys, my name is Candace, and welcome to my channel. Sorry, it's kind of raining right now, so you might hear uh, the raindrops against my porch roof here. But we will try and do this the best we can without the audio being horrible. So, as you've seen in the title of this video, this video is called Abiding in God. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. God during some time when I was abiding with him a few days ago, God told me to go and tell the nations about him. And so he led me to do this through YouTube. Don't know why, don't know exactly what seeds are going to be planted, what's going to come of it, but it's all God and hey, I'm just doing what he tells me to do, right? So let's start before we talk about any of this. Let's start by praying over this word. Okay. God, we thank you so much for bringing us together today. All of the people who are listening to my voice through this video, no matter if it's when I upload it, three years from now, ten years from now, whatever it is that they are listening to this, God, I ask that you would bless them immensely in their lives and that you would bring them closer to you so they learn how to abide in you the same way that you abide in us. I cover this video with the blood of Jesus Christ, and I ask that no thing formed against it shall stand, and that this will all go incredibly smoothly. God, I ask that you speak through me, have it be all of you and none of me, and that the Holy Spirit will bring back everything that I need to know and to say to my remembrance. I ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Alright guys, so the whole idea of abiding in God, if you actually go to the Bible, it's in John chapter 15 verses like 1 through 12, that's where he's talking about being the vine and we are the branches. So, if you got those Bibles, go ahead and crack them open. It's John chapter 15. Okay? I'm going to read it aloud. I already have the King James Version, so, you know, a little old English going on, but follow along the best you can, okay? Alright, let's see. And this is Jesus talking, by the way. It's all red letters. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So what Jesus is saying there is that God is the vine. And if you are a gardener like myself, <laughs> and I actually have a vine growing in my backyard, a nice pickled grapevine, what you know is that in any vine there is the main branch. And that main branch that goes all the way through the vine is what takes the water and brings it to all the branches. It takes all the nutrients and brings them to all the branches. And it is the source of life for the entire vine. Like, the vine cannot bear fruit. It cannot do anything. It can't grow unless it's connected to that main vine. So, that's what God is to us. He is the, our source of life. He, is, he created us. He made us. He loved us. 
sorry, <laughs> he went so far as to put his spirit in us because that's how close he wants to be with us. And as branches, it's kind of like your soul, you know, if you're not connected to God, if you're not connected to that life and connected to that love, then your soul will kind of wither and it'll, you know, become dark. And before, you know, I really had a relationship with God, my soul was like that. But when you're connected into that vine and you're connected into the life and the love, your soul will overflow with the love that he pours into you. So the way it works is the vine pours the nutrients into the branches. And then once the branches are overflowing with those nutrients, they then make fruit. So God takes all of his love, pours it into us. And when we are overflowing with it, then we produce fruit by showing his love to other people. It's the same thing. And it's a really cool, like, explanation of it, if you think of it. It's amazing how God can speak through nature and all the things that he created to tell us things about him. Now, the whole abiding in God thing. A lot of people think, oh, okay, I go to church on the weekend, I spend time with God, I say my prayers before bed, you know, okay, I have a relationship with him. But when you actually think about it, there's levels of relationships, right? But there's levels of relationship with people, there's levels of relationship with God. So there's, you know, an acquaintance I might have at work that I just say, hey to, how's it going? And all they say is fine, (laughs) even though their world may be falling apart because there's just not that level of intimacy so it's just casual acquaintances or you got people who are closer to like actually being your friends and so you might tell them a little bit more and they might tell you a little bit more and you kind of get to know one another and then there's like super intimate relationships like you would have with a spouse where you know a lot about that person almost everything about that person and they know almost everything about you because they've taken the time and put in the energy and effort to get to know you. And it's the same thing with our relationship with God. If we're just going to church on the weekend and that's the only time during the week we actually think about God or talk to God or have anything to do with God, then we're just acquaintances, you know? We're just casual acquaintances. You don't really know much about a casual acquaintance. You can't love a casual acquaintance because you don't know them. And so as we start abiding in God, which basically means we're staying connected to God, staying connected to that line all the time. And I'm not just talking like connecting yourself for weekend services and then unconnecting and then reconnecting again when you want to pray for something because something's going wrong and then you unconnect. Now I'm talking about being connected all the time. So how do we do that? We do that by spending time with him. I mean, it's the same concept as marriage. I mean, God made marriage, so of course he made it as a reflection of his relationship with us. So we would have like a mirror of it here on earth to kind of point us back to him. So with marriage, you constantly pursue your spouse. You are getting to know them on intimate levels and the only way to do that is through open communication and continuing to get to learn about each other and exploring deeper and sharing things and being truthful and honest and open and it's the same thing with God you have to do put in the work you know to have that sort of intimacy that you would have with a spouse with God so the thing is A lot of people are like, okay, well, if I'm going to abide in God, practically, how do I do that? (laughs) And I've learned over the years along my own journey quite a few different ways that you can do that and can practice it during the day. This isn't like, oh, you have to be on your knees in prayer 24 hours a day to abide in God. No, I mean, we have things that we're doing during the day, God-appointed tasks that we have to get done. And... So abiding with him is going to look different depending on what your job is, what season of life you're in, whether you're single, married, kids, no kids, retired, divorce it, whatever it may be. But here are some practical tips, okay? The first being that in order to get... Whoa. Sorry. 
in order to get to know someone you have to get to know about them right so you communicate and you talk with them and they talk with you now the way god talks to us varies from person to person and from season to season but one of the for sure ways you can always learn about him is by opening your bible and reading about him reading about all the things he's done all the promises he's made all of the things he's fulfilled and all the things he's going to fulfill like you can learn so much about his character and how he how much he loves us and how much he cares about us just by going through and reading the stories that are in here and a lot of people are like oh, some of that's a little boring and i'm not gonna lie there are a couple of books in there that are kind of a snooze but and for those of you who love Netflix and drama and intrigue, there is tons of like soap opera drama going on up in these books. <laughs> Not gonna lie, there's enough in there to fill like a whole 10, 15 seasons of a Netflix series, okay? And it's all in there and it all continuously points back to God. It's a giant love story from beginning to end. This whole thing is a love story of God pursuing us over and over and over again and bringing us back to him even though we fell away which is the cool thing about it so that is the first practical tip even if you can only get in and get like read a couple of verses a day i mean it's worth it it's totally worth it there's a lot of good wisdom and tidbits all sorts of stuff in there all right the second thing now i do this because i am a visual person oh the rain starting again. I'm a visual person, so for me, when I talk to God, I like writing it down in a journal. That way, I have something to refer back to later, so I can like look at it years down the road and be like, oh, look at how far you've brought me, God. Look at how much we've done together. Look at how many prayers you've answered. So when I journal, and I journal randomly throughout the course of the day, you know, if I have a spare moment and I really want to talk to God about something, I will journal it as though I'm writing him a letter. So, dear God, you know, such and such and such, I'm going through and talking to him about whatever is going on in my day, whatever is going on in my life. I write things I'm grateful for in there. Thank you, God, for blessing me with this. Thank you, God, for blessing me with my garden. Thank you, God, for blessing me with my family. Thank you, God, for blessing me, you know, mm, on and on, as you do. Mm. And this is also a place where it's not just, you know, the superficial sort of stuff either. Like, this is where you practice having open communication with God, because in any good relationship, you've got to have open communication to foster the intimacy. So, this is where I'll write any of my emotions that I'm having, any difficult situations that I'm going through, or things that I need help with or clarification on. I'll be like, God, this situation is happening. It's really hurting me. I need, I need your help. Like, how do you want me to handle this? You know? And so just being open in your journaling and in talking to him. It doesn't have to be like some formal list or anything like that. Just, just talking. Like you're talking to a friend. That's how you foster the intimacy. The other thing, let's see, what else? Sorry, got to consult the notes sometime, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, praying. So, again, I pray when I get up. I pray when I go to bed. I pray before meals. I pray randomly in the car if somebody crosses my mind. Like, oh yeah, so-and-so was struggling with this. God, could you help them with this? Or, you know... And if I'm going someplace new or going to do something new, I'll be like, hey, God, could you please really help me? I'm having nerves right now. Help me abide in your peace and rest in your peace so I can get through the day. You know, whatever it is, just praying to him about it, asking him to help you out. Because that's what he's there for. I mean, he created us. He wants us to turn to him when we need things or when we're concerned about somebody else or whatever it may be. And so taking it to him in prayer is a way to foster that intimacy. Going along with praying, which I'll randomly do during the day, I also will just like talk to him like he's a friend. Like I'll be 
in my car on the way to work and be like, oh god, look at those little baby geese. They're so cute. They're always out here when I'm driving on my way to work. Thank you for making baby geese, God. <laughs> you know, it's just the random stuff where you see something beautiful, like a new flower out in my yard, and I'll be like, oh god, this one's so cool. What is this? I gotta learn about it. It's a part of your creation. I gotta know what it is. And just having those conversations like you're talking to your best friend. And that's really what God wants to be. He wants to be your best friend. He loves you, no matter what you do. <laughs> he loves you. You can't, you don't earn his love. There's nothing you can do to make him stop loving you. He will love you even if you don't love him. Like, that's the beautiful thing about our relationship with him. We get the reflection of that in marriage. Like, you're, sub you're choosing to love your spouse and your spouse chooses to love you. But being two flawed humans, you know, you're not going to do that perfectly on either end. It's just the way it is. But when you're having this relationship with God, God is perfect. Perfect love. And so you're having this relationship with him that is better than anything you can have anywhere. And so talking to him like he's your best friend, eventually it just comes naturally. And on to the next one. Uh, worship music. So when I am in my car on my way to work or on my way home or if I'm going to get groceries or the library or whatever else, I'll pop on some worship music and just have some time, you know, praising God. And it's not one of those times when you're asking for things or, you know, you're doing that communication so much. It's just more being in his presence and that sort of a thing and acknowledging the fact that he is your God, and he is, he created everything, he is everything, like, it's just good times. Another way to abide in him, which, when I was on the beginning of my faith journey, this didn't, like, occur to me at all, <laughs> but <laughs> now that I'm much farther along, uh, asking him, not just questions about, you know, your life and different things, but asking him like what he wants you to do what he wants you to wear what he wants you to say how he wants you to handle scenarios what he wants you to do with your work life like actually asking for his input on things and then abiding by what he tells you to do or not to do so this may look like uh asking him about if you're having a scenario with a family member where you're like okay this person is driving me up a wall again. <laughs> There's just something not working with the communication between the two of us. Can you please tell me how to handle this situation? Tell me what to do, what to say, how to make this work, you know? And then when he gives you the revelation or tells you whatever it is you need to be more patient or more loving or more kind or whatever, you go forward with it. And you see the fruit of that because you're actually doing what he asked you to do and he knows every single thing that you have ever done everything you ever will do he knows every thought you're ever gonna have and he has the perfect plan for your life like he is working all things together for our good and so why wouldn't I want his input you know like any major life changes any decisions I need to make where I'm like okay god I uh I want to know where you're gonna guide me next what are we gonna do I let him lead me. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I mean, for those of us who are a little bit more, um, how shall we say, type A, <laughs> this is not something that comes naturally. It's something that you take time to get to doing. Um, but the more you practice at it, the better you get at it. <laughs> The more you practice having intimacy with someone, the more you practice, you know, getting to know someone, the more you practice communication, the more you practice anything, the better you get at it. And it's one of those things, too, where, like, it's like, okay, God, uh, you know, if your wardrobe is something that you feel God is convicting you on, you know, talking to him and be like, okay, God, um, what should I be wearing? What do you want me to wear today? I've got this, this, and this event to go to. What should I wear to go to it? You know, or if God's convicting you about, you know, movies you're watching or television shows, books, whatever it may be, asking God, okay, God, what do you want me to read? 
what shows do you want me to watch? What things would be beneficial to me and to my mind, but also beneficial for our relationship? What things do you want me to view and consume that are going to lead me closer to you and not further away? So when you ask him these things, when you talk to him, when you're worshiping him, when you are journaling and praying and reading about him, you are doing all of that work of pursuing him. And that's what you're doing in a relationship, too, is you're pursuing the other person. You're pursuing them and loving them. And this is what we do with God, by abiding in him. And the closer you get to him, the more he'll talk to you. The more he will reveal things to you, the more just the more the better you'll get to understand him and the better you'll get to know him and i mean on this side of eternity no one can really fully understand god but you get that closeness with him where it's like okay i can i'm satisfied i'm satisfied with you and with my relationship with you and i don't need to go to these other things to try and fill the hole that's inside of me that only you can fill i just need to be with you (laughs) And it's, it's super satisfying when you finally get to that point. Oh, you know what? I forgot one on my list. Uh, another way to practically abide in God is fasting. So in modern culture, people use fasting to describe a lot of things. Uh, but it's basically getting rid of something or taking something out of your life for a period of time to spend that time instead with God. So a lot of people will do like a social media fast, which... I've done multiple of those in my time and ended up getting off of social media entirely a few years ago. Uh, Or, you know, taking sweets out of your diet for a while or stopping watching TV for a while or whatever it is, you know, that's consuming your time and instead taking that time and spending it with God instead. Now, if you're going to go like biblical with what fasting means, fasting in the biblical sense is... Uh, a negation of food, more or less. So some people will do it by, okay, I'm not going to have any sugar for so many days. Or it could be, okay, I'm only going to have one meal a day. And the time that I would take for the other two meals, I'm going to go and spend that time with God. Or it could be a prolonged fast. It could be, again, it all depends on how God wants you to fast. So don't jump into a fast without having taken that thought to God first, because God will tell you how to fast. He will tell you what he wants you to fast from. He will tell you how long you are going to be doing it. And if you do it all the way he wants you to, he speaks to you more. You get more revelations. Like It's a great way to take time that you would spend doing other things and spend it with him. Which, again, is all a part of abiding, right? (laughs) Now, where was I? Hold on a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when he's talking about the vine, and it's basically all about love, because God is love, and his love pours into us, and then we pour it into other people, so bearing fruit that way. But that's the thing, we can't bear fruit and we can't pour into other people if we are not being poured into ourselves. And the only way to get poured into is to be connected to the vine. So he wants us to choose to be connected to him. He's not going to force us or duct tape us onto the vine so we can't go anywhere. (laughs) He wants us to choose to love him and to choose to be with him and to choose to seek him out. He wants us to be with him of our own free will the same way, you know, if you're in a relationship or you're going into a marriage, you want the other person to love you for who you are. You don't want them to love you because uh, they're chained to the wall and can't go anywhere. (laughs) Like, you want them to be there of their own free will because that's what makes it meaningful. And it's the same thing with God with us. He wants us to choose him and he shows us himself in his word, in his creation. And he's like, okay, Will you notice what I'm doing? Are you going to pay attention? Are you going to seek me out? Are you going to come looking for me? Are you going to receive what I say? Are you going to like me for who I am? Like, will you love me? That's 
what he wants to know. Yeah. I mean, of course, he knows everything. He is God. But those are the things that he wants us to want to be with him. And, you know, he's not going to force us to stop scrolling on our phones and go spend an hour with him in the Bible. He's not going to force it. He just wants us to come to him. And so if you really want to love someone, or if you do love someone, you want to spend time with them. So you got to pursue God like he's your spouse. Like he's your spouse. The most intimate relationship that you should be, right, that we should be having here on this earth besides with God would be with a spouse. And so you need to pursue God like you would if he was your spouse. I mean, what is it, Isaiah 54? It says, for thy maker is thy husband, and he's talking to Israel, and he goes again and again into this metaphor where Christ is the bridegroom and the church is the bride, and so he references marriage this way. Again, like, we are to be devout to him, like a spouse is to be a devout to their spouse, and to love that spouse and to pursue that spouse. Sorry, lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a two-way street. So just like marriage is a two-way street, one person communicates and the other person, you know, has to receive that communication and then communicate back. It's the same thing with us and God. God can talk all he wants to us, but if we're not listening, or if we're too busy spending time with other people or other things, like, we're not going to hear him and that intimacy is not going to be fostered the way it should be. And it's the same thing, you know, in a relationship. If one is off playing bingo or <laughs> whatever people do these days <laughs> and like not coming home for dinners and not spending time with them, it's just, it's not going to work. Like you don't get married and then be like, oh, okay, I'll spend like four or five weeks with you and then I'm going to go spend six months like trapezing across Europe and not going to call you or talk to you or anything, but then I'll come back and we'll hang out some more. Like, the partner who's getting left behind is not going to be happy. <laughs> That's where God says, uh, in the Old Testament, it talks a lot about how he's a jealous God. And that's not, like, in some sort of toxic, sort of overly possessive sort of way. But it's in a healthy way. Like, if you consider God, like, our first spouse, then he wants our attention. He wants our love. He wants us to reciprocate what he's giving to us, you know, in a, the way we can as humans. And if we're, you know, making something else our God, like in the Old Testament, they were going after other pagan gods and worshiping other, you know, gods, little g. If we're doing that, but it's, we're going after money, we're going after social media influence we're going after you know being known and having so many likes <laughs> or just you know drowning ourselves out in television or games or whatever it may be if we're doing all of those things he's gonna be jealous because he's like what are you doing spending all that time there you're supposed to be spending time with me like i created you don't you want to spend time with me <laughs> Don't you want to be with me? Don't you want to get to know me more? Like, if I were married, I'm not. But if I were, I would be pretty jealous if my husband was out, you know, hanging out with friends or coworkers or other women all the time and not coming home and hanging out with me. Like, I'd be a little miffed, a little jealous. It's the same sort of thing, you know? It's because it's all about wanting that intimacy. And that's what abiding is. Abiding is spending time to create intimacy at the end of the day. And so my question to you is, how much time do you spend with God? Is he a part of your everyday life? Or is he just kind of a casual acquaintance on the weekend, you know? And the good news is, even, like, when I started my faith journey, he was definitely, like, a casual acquaintance, okay? <laughs> the good news is, the more time you spend with him, the more you get to know him, the more you communicate with him and talk to him, the deeper that relationship will go. And there's no end to how deep it's going to be. Like, you can spend your whole life getting closer and closer and deeper and deeper with him. 
and still not hit the bottom of it. <laughs> like, that just keeps getting better and better as you go along, which is a beautiful thing. So, where do you feel his presence the most? Because again, for each person, abiding is going to look different. So like what I do, you may not be into journaling. You may not be into worshiping in your car ride. Maybe you like to listen to podcasts or, you know, sermons or a book on tape. Or maybe you just like to ride in silence. Who knows? But so the question is, where do you feel him the most? The easiest way to start abiding in him is to go where you feel him the most. So for me... I feel him the most when I am out in nature or out in my garden and if I'm in his work. So those are the places I go a good deal of the time to get that closeness and to spend more time with him. And God, of course, can meet you anywhere at any time. You know, even if you're in the shower or whatever else and you just want to spend some time talking to him, he's totally cool with that. But wherever you feel him the most is the best place to start. So, your challenge this week, I'm challenging you guys, yeah, here we go. Your challenge this week is to incorporate that time with God at least three times this week. And I want you to tell me about it in the comments. I want to hear testimonies, okay? I want to know that people are spending time with God and that you're benefiting from hearing about this. Alright? Because <laughs> I love hearing all the good stuff. Now, I think that's about it. Yeah. Alright. So, I pray that you have a very blessed week. And I am a firm believer that whoever God needs this video to get to, you'll be the ones listening to it. And if you're listening to it, I hope you're getting some good blessings out of it. All right. Well, we'll see you next time, whenever God decides to drop another word. Bye.